like telling your son to leave home, that, you, that there was a better father next door. And uh, fortunately, the chemistry between O'Brien and Luganus took off. And in 1980, at the Olympic tryouts, he won the Olympic tryouts so easily, we figured he would win both golds in 1980 in Moscow, uh, the springboard and the 10-meter tower. I don't think that the boycott in 1980 really hit Greg or the rest of us until well after it was all over. And in the, in the history of diving, who knows what would have happened. Greg might have six gold medals. In many ways, the 1980 boycott was to my advantage because had I gone to the 1980 Olympics and had I done well, one, came back with two medals, one of them being gold, then I probably would have retired. At the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics, 24-year-old Greg Luganis is superb. He wins the springboard competition by an incredible 92 points. He follows that performance by creating Olympic history in the platform event the first man to score more than 700 points. To watch Greg uh, dive in the 1984 Olympic Games was like watching my own son. He always called me on Father's Day, uh, New Year's, and Christmas to wish me a greeting. And I always say, he says, I want to greet my number two father. I said, well, I want to greet my number one diver and my number two son. Now here at the Seoul Olympics, 28-year-old Greg Luganis has a new world to conquer. Already the winner of two gold and one silver Olympic medals, five world titles, and 47 national championships, he will attempt to win back-to-back -back gold medals in both diving events to duplicate the feat of America's Pat McCormick, who performed the double-double at the 1952 and 1956 Olympic Games. He felt more pressure, I think, than at any other time because he was expected to win two gold medals. Second place was not going to be good enough. Uh, he was going for the double-double, which had never been accomplished before by a man. There was no room for error. And the gap had closed between he and the Chinese divers between 1984 and 1988. And uh, neither he nor I thought it was going to be a walk away. We thought it was going to be a, a tough contest. In the preliminary round, 35 divers will compete for the 12 places in the final. On Luganus's ninth dive, he miscalculates his distance from the board. It's a strange thing, and I didn't say much to anybody at the time, but um, when he got up on the board to do that dive, I had this strange feeling in my gut that he was going to hit the board. And I think there were some reasons for that. He had done a reverse dive, similar type of dive, earlier in the contest, and he was too close to the board. And then when he got up on the board, I thought this eerie feeling that, that he was going to hit. And when he took off, I knew he was going to hit the board. Everyone is relieved that the accident is not more serious. His scores are very low. Luganus fears that he may not qualify as one of the 12 finalists. Incredibly, his two dives following the accident are amongst his best of the competition. And when the final tabulations are announced, Luganus not only qualifies, he finishes third. The next day, Greg Luganus performs as if the accident never occurred. As he prepares for his 11th and final dive, Luganus is well in the lead. When the competition is over, the winners of the gold and silver medals are the same as in 1984. Greg Luganis, United States first. More than 25 points in front of Tan Leonga of the People's Republic of China. In third place, Tan's teammate, Li Deliang.
When the platform diving competition began, no one would have predicted that the situation would be so similar to what took place 12 years earlier at the Montreal Olympic Games. 28-year-old Greg Louganis is in the same situation as DiBiase was in 1976. Now Louganis is the old man and trails 14-year-old Zhong Ni of the People's Republic of China by a little more than two points. Each man has two dives left. Louganis will dive after Zhong Ni. Now Zhong Ni's ninth dive a back three-and-a-half somersault in the tuck position. Knee scores are magnificent. Now Lou Gaines's attempt at the same dive. Come on, Greg. This is it. Come on, do the best thing you ever did in your life. Do the best thing. Oh, a little short. A little short. A little short on the guy. It's going to come to the last dive now. Lou Gaines' scores are nearly as good, but he falls a little further behind. He now trails me by three points. There is one dive left. The question was whether or not Zhang Li would be able to hit all his dives, because traditionally before that, he always missed one dive badly. In fact, Greg said he was standing up on the platform before his last dive when Zhang Ni was doing his thinking. He's never hit all his dives before. Maybe he's going to miss this one a little bit. Zhang <laughs> Ni, the People's Republic of China. Here we are in the finals of the diving, and the little Chinese boy, 14-year-old kid, who was built like Greg Luganis was in 1976, and he's leading Greg, the legend of diving. And being the great sportsman that I am, when the kid got up to do his 10th dive, I turned to Ron O'Brien and I said, being the great sportsman, I hope he lands flat on his butt. Gaines's 10th dive, a reverse three and a half somersault in the tuck position. It is the same dive Lou Gaines performed at the 1984 games when he won the gold medal. It is called the dive of death. Deja vu. Here Greg was the old man of diving. Here was this 14 year old kid, the Chinese kid, who was bleeding. And Greg had to do a near perfect dive, and fortunately he had higher degree of difficulty. The so-called death-defying dive, the reverse three and a half that had killed two divers in the past three years. And Greg, if he jumped three inches too far out, he was finished. He would not get a good score. If he jumped six inches too close, there may have been not another Greg Lugatus. Come on, kid. Jumping up and out. Ron O'Brien was there, and he hugged Ron O'Brien and broke on tears.